from Washington, D.C. It's the Cube covering Dot Next Conference. Brought to you by Nutanix. Welcome back to NextConf, everybody. This is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. My name is Dave Vellante and I'm with Stu Miniman. This is the, the president's <laughs> segment. Sadish Nehera is back. Good to see you again, Sadish, the president of Nutanix. And Captain Canada himself, Chad Sackage. Dave. CUBE alum, good friend. Dave, it's good, good to, to see, see you, again. Stu. Hey, everybody, most important thing, great, you know, .NextConf, but look, Canada Day, July 1st, is right around the corner. So remember everybody, go have some poutine, drink some beers, and celebrate. <laughs> then there's this July 4th thing that is apparently right around them. Yeah, well it's important to us because we've ended an you know, eight week sprint of, right. of the Isn't Chad so. wearing red, white, and blue? Yeah. I think he's uh, I yeah. actually did that on purpose, yeah. you noticed. Know <laughs> Here in DC, I nice figured job. when in DC, you know, celebrate Americana. Why not? Well, there's a lot of celebration going on here. Um, you guys have been celebrating several years now, what is it? Two and a half years of a... With the Dell, of, yes. Of with a Chad, partnership. it's relatively new, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, it's, so. It's, it's actually been about three years, and uh, it's been a ridiculously successful partnership. Um, you know, I think... I would say face meltingly successful, but... Uh, yeah, I, you know what, I agree. <laughs> okay, so coming into this role, did you have misconceptions about Nutanix, or was that just marketing when you were kind of... No. Nutanix basically created the HCI category. Uh, they've been at it now for seven and change years. Yep. Um, you know, great, great technology, uh, very happy customers. Um, I'd say out of the 6,200 or so uh, Nutanix customers, Roughly around 2,500, 2,700 are XC customers. So I've gotten to know them really well. They, they tell me pretty clearly what they like about Nutanix and what they like about XC. All right, so, so Chad, I'm looking at my notes here and uh, uh, there was a guy, Chad Sackage, who said, uh, niche corner case for VDI only, uh, you know, that, that, that was Nutanix. Love it. Uh, you know, uh, you're singing a little bit of a different story than, than we might have heard a couple of years ago. You know, I would say that it's important to acknowledge when you're wrong, Stu. Yeah. You know, and, and uh, I think that HCI in general um, has moved absolutely out of any corner case segment whatsoever. I met with a customer this morning that is basically a hospital that is running the bulk of all of their mission critical customer healthcare records, packs, all in XC. And again, you know, I, I don't want to get us in trouble here at the .next conference, but we have an HCI portfolio. We see customers deploying HCI for every workload under the sun um, at this point. And frankly, you, I've said it publicly now, firmly and as clearly as I can, SDS and HCI models are ready for the majority of x86 workloads. That's not just my opinion, it's, it's the company, it's Dell Technologies' point of view overall. Right? You know, Joe Tucci was the master of sort of building an ecosystem with quasi-competitors, competition, whatever you want to call it. And it's certainly the, the Dell EMC relationship of, of many years ago was epic. One of the, probably the most successful you know, storage relationship ever. Yep. So, and, and Sadish, you get you know, a lot of concerns of Wall Street, oh, when's this going to end? You guys used to get that all the time with, with Cisco and, and VC, and yet you continue to, to do, do well there. Yep. <laughs> Still do. <laughs> Valid questions, you know, it's the, it's the obvious place for analysts, snarky analysts to go. But in retrospect. Is there such a thing as a non-snarky analyst? There are a couple, there are a couple out there. Uh, they're sitting here, right here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. After, after the comments that I've already got it. It's paid to be snarky. That was fantastic, it, by the way. But that was like watching Charlie Rose and Bill Clinton. Yeah. Hard but smooth. Yeah, yeah. So, if I go back into history though, I wish, I wish Michael were here, and I'll, yeah. I'll ask Michael, I'll ask you, I know you watch, I'll ask you next time I see you. I wonder if he had to do it all over again, if he knew now what he, or then what he knew now, if he would have just said, you know what, I'm going to do better just staying with the EMC partnership instead of going out and buying Equalogic or Compellent. And we would have done better for customers, but have made, made more money. I wonder if you've learned anything from that experience. I mean, you were biased because you're on the EMC side of that. Obviously, you didn't want to see Dell end that relationship, but are there similarities here? Hmm. You know, um, I think that there's similarities, but there's a notable difference. Um, when the 
Dell EMC merger occurred, and the first time I came out to visit headquarters, um, and lots of discussions with Sadish and with Diraj, there's a core thing here that's important to understand. The market is not in a zero sum game. So, if, if there's um, 6,200 Nutanix customers, 2,500 XC customers, roughly 3,000 VX Rail customers, roughly 8,000 vSAN customers, you know how many VNX customers there are? 300,000. Do you know how many PowerEdge servers there are out there? 27 million. We're on the earliest days of the software-defined and HCI journey, and, and frankly, that's just the first step towards building hybrid clouds on-prem and off-prem that bridge one another, which has been a big part of the announcements from this yeah, week. Yeah, look, I think uh, the first part of the question you asked, you got to be honest that, you know, when you flip sometimes TV channels, let's say you come across National Geographic, right? And then there's a cheetah chasing a deer. You stop, you want to watch, you know what's going to happen. The cheetah's going to eat the deer, one way or other, that's going to happen. You know it, but you want to watch it. The way we think of our industry, status quo is the cheetah. Yeah. The deer is all of us. The moment you stop innovating, that is particularly true for companies like us, young companies, the partnership that we have is not built on anything but the fact that we are adding more value for customers than what we could individually do, that's it. The sum of the parts of this should be higher than the individual parts, right? So what we have done, for example, uh, last quarter, you are absolutely right, and when financial analysts, they'll always ask us about the Dell EMC overhang. Last quarter, for example, we for the first time publicly talked about the fact that um, uh, Dell EMC business was around eight to nine percent of our overall revenue. And it is not because that didn't grow. It is growing. Mm -hmm but the overall business we are able to keep growing. Our destiny is in our hands. And it comes down to a couple of things. Our ability to do really accelerate the innovation. Because as a younger company, more agile, we are expected to do more, and you saw this morning. Number two, make sure that we are playing fair. There are rules of engagement that we have, because we know that they have a tremendous amount of portfolio and some of them will overlap, and that's okay but you have to clearly define the rules of engagements and be very fair in and how we treat the partners. And if you do those two things right, we know that this is a relationship that will last a long time. And let, just a quick little add, I mean, the things that we bring is extending the platform, scale, and reach. There's no question that you're a younger company, there's no question that we're a larger company. Um, the number of customers that say, we want the better together thing and we give them that choice, it's very important for us to do that, but also add value. So whether it's integrating data protection, whether it's what we've done around running Cloud Foundry on top of XC, Home Depot, you know, talked That's about it. Example, you know, yeah. It's a great example where they want this, that, all together. Now, I can't emphasize enough that what we've been trying to emphasize is be transparent, be consistent about those rules of engagement and telling our customers, you know, driving that choice and giving them that benefit is something that we have to sustain. And it's also important to understand that, you know, if you spend this morning watching the keynote, you clearly saw that we did not talk about hyperconversion. Mm -hmm. What we talked about were two things. One is pushing that cloud intelligence to the edge and then building a hybrid cloud experience that is totally transparent. And the second thing, was about building a multi-cloud environment through Calm. We did not talk about hyperconvergence. Those things are not built on a platform that is not built for, you know, that, that those things are built on a platform that is ready for a web scale architecture. So the, 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 the foundation that we have built in the last seven years is on which we are building. And as long as we continue to add value like that and partner, for example, uh, on, on PCF, uh, you know, prior, uh, Pivotal Cloud Foundry, uh, that's a classic example, the uh, Home Depot example, right? They need that same experience that they're giving AWS. And AWS is not just doing IIS, they're doing PaaS, they're doing yep. the entire thing. To do that, there is no shame in figuring out what we do well, what we don't do well, understand their strengths and weakness, come together and deliver something that is better for customers. So, so, Tisha, I'm curious actually, because Home Depot is a, uh, you know, Lighthouse account for Pivotal yeah. uh, on Google Cloud Platform. Yeah. Talking to them about it for the last six months, you know, 
how does that fit in? And yeah, I, I, I have to. We, we know that the Dell family yes. is a multifunction, so I'm curious to want to hear the Nutanix, you know, piece yeah. of how Look, that fits in. Look, I think in. the Google thing is a relatively new thing for us. Yeah. We are expecting two different, uh, 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 you know, areas that we are going to partner no, with no, them. But, but Home Depot specifically is that yeah. related? Because they're no, they're not. a big no. GCP customer. They, so absolutely. Maybe but this specific in. project is all on XC yeah. with PCF. The right. the thing that I think is fascinating. And, and two watchers, I would say, for the intellectually curious that are willing to double click and go a little bit further, it's a little more of a complex, nuanced story, but everyone's looking for a sound bike, whether it's in politics, as we're here in DC, or whether it's in news or whatever. Home Depot, like a ton of customers, is using GCP. They're using XC. They're using vSphere. They're using NSX. They're using PCF. Like it's not like there's um, some singular thing. Uh, you know, another fascinating example is, I talked to a customer uh, who's a fantastic scale IO, VX rack flex customer, vSphere, enormous scale and scope, and when I asked them, they want a hybrid cloud to this point. HCI is just a foundation for hybrid cloud use. When I asked them like, what are their hybrid cloud targets, they're like AWS, but we use GCP because we depend on TensorFlow. It is, it, we live in a world which you need to expand your mind and not naturally create this like binary A, B so it's, thing. It's a multi-cloud world, Chad. So <laughs> it's a multi-stack, multi-cloud, multi-use case world. An another, heterogeneous mess in IT that we've been dealing with. <laughs> so a, another thing that analysts do a lot is give unsolicited advice. So <laughs> I, I want to do that and Let's maybe get your reaction. So Amazon's operating profits are, are, are roughly almost double what EMC's were, mm -hmm. uh, Amazon Web Services, when, when EMC was a public company massive you know, change and, and disruptive force in our industry. And frankly, if it, if it weren't for AWS, we wouldn't be where we are today as fast as, as we were. So I, I see your joint challenge as fulfilling the vision of what we call true private cloud, substantially mimicking the cloud experience on-prem. And you're behind, and, and you know you're behind at that because Amazon's by definition in, in the lead. So your challenge as we see it is to create that experience and create that automation and, and allow people to shift their labor costs to the fun stuff. By the way, I, I agree and I accept that advice. Uh, you can answer for you, but I'll, I'll tell you, we've been trying to, so we started with the first enterprise hybrid cloud efforts um, almost three and a half years ago. And they're enormous, and at the time we said, and deploy it on anything you want. And you know what, we had very limited success with that. And the reason we had limited success wasn't because we didn't get the customer going, yes, I want to have a hybrid cloud where I can bridge and connect to multiple different uh, public cloud targets. That idea, dead right. The idea of you can build it any way you want, yeah. wrong. Then we said, okay, you know what, CI is a simplification. We realized that life cycling CI stacks on, you know, along with a CMP layer, whether it's inside an integrated thing or whether it's directly adjacent, still too complex. The latest is basically all of our hybrid cloud, whether it's destined towards enterprise IaaS or PaaS on-prem, runs on HCI. When? Always. Because HCI is fundamentally orders of magnitude easier to, sim to deploy, to scale, to version, et cetera, et cetera. What I've you know, been seeing over the last you know, 24 hours about basically the Calm acquisition becoming part of Acropolis is you know, the example where Nutanix is taking it, where they're trying to build it into the Calm and Acropolis stack. I think that's a common vision yeah, between look, the I two companies. What you will hear from HP or Cisco or EMC or Nutanix, the picture isn't going to change much because we all know what the blueprint looks like. I think the real question is, how do you get there? How you do that is where the difference is going to be. And the advantage we have is that because we built every stack with that clean architecture in mind, the North Star being we have to deliver a fully automatable stack, we have a sort of a, an added advantage of building every step connect naturally to the next step. So for example, uh, our metadata structure, our storage fabric, our virtualization fabric, AHV, our uh, automation fabric on Calm, and how we are introducing Xi as a hybrid cloud service, it is all controlled from Prism. And that Prism itself and Prism Central are fully distributed. 
So that ability to deploy this at scale across multiple continents and manage it, that is very similar to how Amazon, the reason why Amazon can deliver you know, a millisecond billing on Lambda stack is not because they are taking 10 different products. They have technology mm. that is built to deliver that level of granularity. Yeah. Mm. That, so again, I, 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 I agree, but there's an element that I disagree. Calm was an acquisition. Calm was an acquisition of people and talent to basically extend up into the IaaS, chargeback, billing, self-service portal domain. No, no disrespect of the decision, technology, architecture, right? Uh, you've done obviously great progress that you've shown to the market uh, the last two days about how you're integrating that into your stack. We've been at this now for four years and we've looked at how do we need to keep evolving our own Dell technology stacks. Again, it's not an either or. Um, so for example, we do multi-site PCF deployments directly on top of a HCI target that has total life cycle, completely distributed stack, and the Pivotal Google work around Kubernetes coming as part of Pivotal, which echoes a lot of the Kubernetes becoming part of your stack as well. Kubo highlights what we're all trying to do towards that, that target. Again, I think that the natural tendency, because people like to see uh, car races to watch for crashes, uh, cheetahs chasing uh, lions. Or I something like that. We're all <laughs> striving to do what you said. Yeah. The customer demand for simple to operate, simple to deploy, simple to scale, turnkey IaaS, PaaS, and even SaaS stacks that are a hybrid deployment model, that is a fact. How customers mm -hmm. need to evaluate all the choices in the marketplace is again, who does it best. And if you don't, you're, you're the deer, is your, your you're, point. You're the lion right. or the deer. Yeah. I wish we had more time, guys. Uh, I'll give you both the, the, the last word. Chad, you're, you know, you're everywhere this week, and uh, everywhere every week, but last I, final thoughts. Final thoughts, I mean, uh, customers can know that we're committed to customer choice. We're committed to this partnership. The number of customers and revenue continues to grow. Our point of view is that we've got a portfolio approach, but no one should be confused about what that means. That means that we're committed to the partnership. Customers, I've talked to a lot of them here, they're happy. Never punch your customer in the face, and never punch yourself in the face. <laughs> simple strategy from Chad Sackatch. <laughs> My point is very simple. That. I think this is a partnership that is working. The company is run by really smart people. I don't think we are interested in doing anything that is going to make our customer's decision mm -hmm. a wrong one for them. And we are committed. We are committed to innovate and we are committed to service the joint customers together. Thank you. Guys, you know, you guys make this job fun. Thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. Really it's appreciate our pleasure, it. guys. Remember, happy Canada Day. <laughs> All right, <laughs> July 1st. Love it. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest right after this short break.